Today I want us to make rain. We've done this one time before, long ago. I'm dividing you into groups. First group, second group, third group, fourth group, all right? Now when I say your group, you do what I say. And if I don't call your group, don't do anything, okay? And don't change whatever I have you doing until I come to your group, all right? I know that's confusing, but you'll get it. Group one, let's do this. Everybody be quiet. And everybody listen. Group two. You just made rain. Wasn't that cool? I love making rain. It's a hot and scorching day. It's 100 degrees. It's been that way for four days in a row. There are heat advisories everywhere. You are afraid to get out because of the heat. And all of a sudden, a cloud comes over, just one cloud, and it covers you. And all of a sudden, it feels a little cooler. And you're hoping that cloud won't go because you're really enjoying the coolness. And before long, the whole area, we got a little blockage there, guys, on our little remote. There you go. Okay. All of a sudden, the clouds come, and they, they cover, and all of a sudden, you feel the temperature drop like 20 degrees, and it's so much nicer, and it's so much cooler, and then you smell it, that smell of rain. It's coming, and you hear a rumbling in the distance of thunder, and you're like, oh, Lord, it's coming. And then it always happens, all of a sudden, the first drop, and the green grass Helps the yellow grass stand up with its mouth open, and it begins to rain. You see, the sacrifices in the Old Testament, they were nothing more than a cloud, a, a, a temporary relief. That's what sacrifices were. You know, clouds don't mo make grass grow. Did you know that? The smell of rain won't water a tree. Neither can sacrifices cover sins. They just can't. They're a sign of something good coming. Now we read in the text, in Hebrews 10, 5, Therefore when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased. Then I said, Here am I. It is written about me in your scroll. I have come to do your will, O God. Now that text that Jesus quoted was from Psalm 40. The Jewish people had read that for a thousand years. Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. Offerings you did not want, so I said, here am I. And the Jewish people read that, and for some reason it seemed like a distant cloud that maybe one day would, would bring cover. But they didn't know what it meant. Now, they read it, and they understood that God didn't care for animal sacrifices. He didn't want them. They did no good. And then the writer in Psalm 40 says, 
But what you want is a body prepared for me. Not animals, but a body you prepared for me. Offerings you did not want, they didn't satisfy. So I said, here am I, God. I'm here to do your will. And the Jewish people wondered, who is that talking? Now we know, they didn't. At the temple gate, every day, every morning, and we are still not clicking, dog it. All right, one more click. Every day at the temple, sheep would line up. Sheep and goats and bulls and doves, all of them together were for sacrifices for the people's sins, and yet we just read. All those sheep, all those bulls, every day, every morning, every night, three times a year, everybody came. Not one of them did God want. Not one of them. Why did God not want them? Because they could not cover sins. Let me put it in a, in a better term. And I'm going to have to... I think there's something blocking the thing, those Bibles and stuff. Is it not? Okay. Well, just there we go. Flick back. Flick back. All of our technical... We got a lot of technical difficulties today. All right. Let's say the Cowboys are playing the Eagles today. We know they are, 325. Cowboys, Brian, are going to kick the Eagles' tail, right? Now, do I have any Eagle fans here today? Renee, I thought you were going to heaven. What's up with that? Okay. All right, let's pretend Renee didn't raise her hand. Now, I'm a Cowboy fan, and I see this punk who's an Eagle fan, we all boo the Cowboys. And he starts getting real mouthy, and he gets me mad. And you don't want to get me mad. And all of a sudden, I lose control, and I beat that guy up horribly. In fact, the motto has to pull me off of him. I'm just pounding him. And they had to take him to the hospital. And that loser Eagle fan, he's in bad shape. He's been put in a coma. And they say it's going to take years for him to ever recover. And I'm here there looking to arrest me. So I hide up in the attic of the church, but someone tips them off, one of you probably, and they drag me out, and they put me on trial, and they sentence me to 50 years without parole. And right as they're dragging me off, I say, wait a minute, judge, wait, I've got an answer. Next slide, please. Take my dog, please. I've already got him behind bars. He's ready to go. And the judge says, are you kidding me? I'm not taking your dog for what you did. You committed the crime in your body, and your body will suffer the punishment. And they dragged me off. And I will serve every moment of that sentence in this body. You see the dilemma. Christ sees it. Every one of us have sinned. Every one of us are sinners. Every one of us are guilty. And Christ knows the wages of sin is death, eternal death, in hell, alive, awake, but dying every moment. And no animal can take our place. No offering, no religion, no good deed can take our place. And Christ says, Father, how about this body you prepared for me? Can I take their place? Father, here I am. Next slide, please. And Jesus took our place on the cross because somebody has to pay for the sin. Now, in the heat and the scorch of guilt, in sin, that's relief to me. That's an amazing relief that, that here we were in sin and Christ says, take my body, God. And you know, God is just. We need to understand that. And sometimes we're afraid to say God is just, but we ought to cling to that today because God is just. And what does that mean? That means because he punished Jesus for our sins, He's not going to turn around then and say, you know what? 
I'm going to punish you for your sins too. No, that wouldn't be just. God gave it to Christ so you and I are set free. Next slide. We were covered in the mud and the muck of sin. There's no way we could get cleaned up. And yet the text says that Christ washed us. Verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have the confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. We were filthy in sin. No way to clean us up. Next slide, please. And then Christ came and he washed us clean. The whole reason we're in church Every Sunday is gratitude, is thanksgiving, is celebration. God, I don't have to suffer for my sins anymore. I praise you. I celebrate you. I worship you. Every Sunday, that's why we come. We can't thank them enough. If we could thank them enough, we'd come one Sunday and be done. But we can't thank them enough. So we come every Sunday because we can't thank him enough and the reason we come to church is to thank him to worship him but there's more verse 24 and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching we come together to give God praise. We come together to worship Him and thank Him. But we also come together to spur each other on. There's a young boy in this church. He went to a new school this year, true story. He'll be here in the second service. He's a Christian young man. And he's running with some, some people who said they were his friends. But because he wouldn't smoke pot with them, they beat him up. And he showed up at his house two weeks ago with a busted lip, a bloody nose, a torn shirt, and a black eye. His parents in this church were horrified. And they decided, one, I think we're going to sue the school, and two, he's never going back there again. And it wasn't A-Leaf, by the way. And the son was just quiet and unconsolable and he went up to his room and the parents tried to comfort him they couldn't comfort him he thought they were his friends but because he stood for christ he was beat up after a while they left him alone and then he comes down a little bit past dinner time and he says mom dad i want to share something with you today i want to go back to that school tomorrow and the parents said why son he says, isn't that what Christ would do? And not only that, he said, Mom, Dad, can, can we go buy those three boys who beat me up a Texan shirt? I want to give it to them. I want to tell you, I don't know about you, but that encourages the fire out of me. We had a church member in this church, same week. She went to the grocery store right up the street at the, at the one right there, Derry Ashford and West Time. Is it Fiesta? I think it's Fiesta. And while she's buying her groceries, she sees a young boy run out with something he stole. The, the, the manager chases after him and can't catch him, but they know the young man. And so they call the police to the store, and they give the name. They know kind of where he lives. And this lady in your church family went to that manager and said, you know what, I know that boy too. And I don't know what he stole, but I want to pay for it. Tell me what it is. And that lady from this church paid for somebody who stole to show mercy and love. And I don't know about you, but that comforts the fire out of me. I am spurred on by what I'm seeing. Gregory, is Gregory here? Jimmy, is he around? All right. Gregory, three weeks ago, uh, not three weeks ago, a few months ago, 
his oldest daughter, 32 years old, has a stroke. 32 years old, has a stroke. She's at the West Houston Hospital. She can't dress herself. She can't sit up. She can't speak clearly. And they say it's going to be a long road to recovery. And every day, Gregory's up in that hospital trying to figure out how am I going to provide for her. And Monday, his other daughter in a head-on collision. Now, thankfully, she's okay. But Gregory came and he said, if it wasn't for Christ, I could not face any of this. He's the only thing that keeps me sane. And he's here every Sunday. That ought to comfort you. That ought to comfort me. See, we're here to praise God, but we're here to spur each other on. We're here to comfort each other. I don't want to miss church. I loved you so much, I became a preacher. I wanted to be here all the time. Listen, you don't have to go home to be married. But if you're married, you ought to want to go home. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian. But if you're a Christian, you ought to want to be in church. Especially now, especially in these days. Our wall back here has been tagged by gangs. Why? Because we're in a gang area. We could have built it in some lily white community where everybody's really sweet and got lots of money, but we decided the gates of hell where we want to build a church. And we stand here fighting it tooth and nail. Saturday night, someone broke in our church, broke in our offering box, ripped it apart. I don't know if there was money in it or not, but that happens here. You know what? We ought to be clinging to God all the more as we see the day approaching. And that day is approaching. Christ is coming soon. And I want to be counted ready. I want to be counted loyal. I want to be counted trustworthy. And I need to be comforted. And I need to be spurred on. And I need to be refreshed. And that's why Christ came. There are two applications in the message today. Next slide, please. Christ died for everybody. He did. The Bible didn't say for God so loved part of the world. It said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Here you and I are busted. We're guilty in our sin. The sentence is death eternal in hell. And Christ says, Dad, how about my body? Can I take their place? And God, with a big swallow and tears going down his face, said, you know what, son? It's all right with me if it's all right with them. And do you understand that every one of us, at some point in your life, God says, my son is on a cross for your sins. Do you want him to take your place? 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 He comes to each of us. And when he came to me and he said, do you want him to take my, my place? I said, oh yeah, God. I want him to take my place. And I knelt and I prayed and I asked God to save me. And the Bible says, not only have I been forgiven, I've been born again. Born again. You know, I've been born twice. Did you know that? I've been born two times. The first time I can't remember. The second time I can't forget. Because I've been born again. I've been washed. Christ took my place. But the majority of people in this world say no. He comes and he says, do you want him to take your place? Do you want him to take your place? And people say, no, not now, not yet, some other way. And they turn them away. We don't have enough churches if people receive Christ. We'd have to build ten times or more the number of churches if people actually would say, yes, and those people you know that you love who are telling him no, they will stand before him one day 
and they'll be found guilty of their sins. But don't think on that day they'll start falling on their knees saying, okay, I want Jesus now, because the Bible says they will get harder, and the Bible says they will gnash their teeth, and they'll say, I hate you, God. And they will curse Christ, and they'll be drugged to hell, cursing all the way. Now you tell me, what punishment do they deserve when they throw God's son in his face and say, I don't want him? The Bible says in this text, it's a terrible thing, verse 31, to fall in the hands of the living God. And yet the majority of the world, God says, do you want him to take your place? And they say no. So if that's you, today's the day of salvation. Today you can say, God, yes, I want Jesus to take my place. And he promises he'll let him. And he promises you'll be saved forever. Because God is just. And because he punished Christ for your sins, he will not then punish you for your sin. I love to know that. Because every time I'm so afraid I'm going to lose my salvation, I'm afraid that I've sinned and God's going to change his mind. God is just. And that sin has already been paid for. Now those who are Christians, their second application today, We read in verse 32, remember those earlier days after you'd received the light when you stood your ground in a great contest in the face of suffering? Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. And at other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You sympathized with those in prison and you joyfully accepted the confiscation of of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possession. You remember when you were saying, do you? I remember kneeling in my bed asking Christ to be my Savior, but I wasn't sure it took. I, it was just me and God. And I was like, you know, Lord, it's just you and I. And I really want to know this was that you saved me. And so at Latham Springs Baptist Camp the next week, First song of the first service, the first invitation. I ran down that aisle, and I said, I got to know. And the preacher said, you can know he has saved you. And I can't tell you how happy I was. I wanted to put on a praise dance costume and and dance on stage. I, I, I just, I literally could not help it. I had to run and shout. I've been saved. At the end of the camp, the, the evangelist gave out fish hooks. You could wear on your, on, your, on your collar or wear on your lapel or wear on your shirt. He said, wear that. Wear that to school. And when people ask you, hey, do you know you got a fish hook on your shirt? Yeah, I know. Why is it there? Because I'm a fisher of men and I've been saved by a Savior. And I wore that fish hook all through high school. And you know what? They called me gay because I wouldn't talk about sex with women. A man went to my dad, said, I got to talk to you about your son, Johnny. I think he's on drugs because he's always happy. Nobody's that happy who's not on drugs. And he was serious. And my dad just laughed. And when he left, he goes, come here, Johnny, I'm going to tell you something. They think you're on drugs. I go, why? He goes, because you're always so happy. When you get saved, when you're a Christian, not only do you do things the world think is stupid, you also look goofy doing it. When you receive Christ, you are an inviting insult. You're inviting persecution. You're inviting hatred. Don't misunderstand that. And when you receive Christ, you're going to lose some stuff. You'll lose sin, yeah. You'll lose guilt, yeah. But you'll also lose friends. And you'll lose family. And you'll lose possessions. And you'll lose an opportunity to get a job or get a possession. And you'll lose freedom. And you may even lose your life. Next slide, please. Because those that come to Christ were under attack. And this young girl... Her face is marred for the rest of her life 
because she's a Christian in Nigeria and she smiles. Why does she smile? Because Jesus took her place. Because whatever they take from her can't match what God's going to give to her. And God will heal that face one day. She'll be scarred for this life, but forever and ever and ever she'll be healed. You see, the text here says, don't draw back. It says that we are to hold on. Verse 37 says, for in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay, but my righteous one will live by faith. We've got to trust that God keeps his promises. We've got to walk with him knowing that he rewards those who obey him. And a lot of us want to leave and quit. I'll be honest, there are easier lives in this life than being a Christian. There are many days I know Lori would have thought, life is easier without that basket case named Johnny. But she stays. And I promise you, there are easier husbands to live with. You see me all polished and shiny up here somewhat. She doesn't see that at home. We always think we can do better. And honestly, most of you women, you could do better. But is that the call Christ has for your life? Did Christ not say, I'm going to keep my promises, you keep yours? Did he not say, in obedience, there's great reward? So many of us want to quit. We want to give in that addiction, that, that draw, that pull, that, that just, it'd be relief if I could just give in once. But you give in once, you give in twice, you give in infinite times. Stay in the battle. Stay in your marriage. Stay in your job. Stay in your walk. Stay in your faith. Stay in this life. My football coach at Tarleton State just read this week, he hung himself. I loved him. And he hung himself. Because he got so down, he decided to quit this life. Don't let that ever be said about us. Because my Bible says we are more than conquerors through the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't quit. I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care how hard it gets. Stay in it. Because just like that sweet girl, Christ took our place. And he one day will make everything good. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to a service here at Church at the Cross. You are our special guest this evening, and we're so honored that you joined us. Even as you sit there, maybe you've been feeling a tug in your heart. Maybe you understand that maybe things aren't right with you in the Lord, or you want to make sure that you're a Christian. Today is every day. I want to give you the opportunity to receive Christ as your Savior. If you bow your head and pray with me, Lord Jesus, you pray that. I want to be a Christian. I want you to save me. I believe you died for me. You pray that. And I believe you've risen again. I ask you to forgive my sins. You pray that. Come into my heart and save me. Lord Jesus, with all that I am and all that I have, I give you me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you have just been born again. You were saved. And now what do you do next? You need to find a good, strong, Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. You're always welcome in our church here at Church of the Cross. We're at 3835 South Derry Ashford. We have a 9 a.m. and 1115 a.m. service every Sunday morning. And we just welcome you to come see us. God bless you and thank you again for your time this evening.